Hi guys, I'm Darren, and in this video, I'm going to show you how you can get data on your front screen in EFOS. So this video comes as a viewer request and actually asked how they could see the voltage from their model on the transmitter's homepage. So what I'm going to do is show you a quick overview of the telemetry screens, how you can use them and how you can set up voltage. Of course, we can see many other things with these screens and I'll cover that in the video as well. But first, let's head over to the workbench. Right, so before we get started with how we set it up, I just want to show you what we're setting up. So we're talking about this data here. So when you first get your transmitter, there are by default three different timers. So you can see I've, I've got a flight timer, a total for all the flights with this aircraft and also flight mode. So if I change my switch, you can see it flip between manual and stabilized flight modes. Now, these are all using stuff that's built into the radio at the moment. So the timers are something that's built into a radio. This is just showing the name of the flight mode. So if I pop in the models and go to flight modes, you can see all this is doing is showing the name of this flight mode. But we can set up these screens to do a lot more, including telemetry. So this isn't the only layout you're stuck with either. You can actually have different layouts. This is the default layout. So we have the model image on one side and we have three blocks on the other side. We also have different trim uh, statuses. So we have the throttle, rudder, uh, elevator and aileron trim, plus also the trims for these extra two down here. So that is the default layout, but we can have many layouts. I don't know if I've got one set up, but yeah, I have. So this is a second layout and we can set these up using extra screens, which I'll show you how to do. And we can slide across or we can press this middle button, which switches between the pages. And this gives us access to a lot more data. You can see here that I'm actually using telemetry data from my flight controller and the uh, RF system. So we have transmitter power, the quality, the mode of the system, GPS coordinates, the receiver battery, which is actually the battery from the uh, voltage sensor on the flight controller in this case. We have GPS altitude, number of satellites, the um, current that's going through the flight controller and also the vertical speed. We can set up basically anything we get a sensor for, we could potentially set data up. So what I'm gonna do is create a new model and we'll start getting these set up. This is just a, basically a brand new model. And you can see here the three timers that we were talking about before. So let's just change one of these because let's say we don't have three timers, what else can we show from the transmitter without actually setting anything else up yet? So to change one of these, all we do is tap on it, tap on it again, and we can go to configure widget. And on here, we can just set up what we're viewing. So by default, this timer is a value. So what that means is it shows you the actual value output by that source. And if we go down to source, you can actually select what we have. So we have analogs, which means that you can actually output the position of a stick. So let's go back to the main page and you can see it's outputting the percentage of the rudder stick. We have switch positions, we have the trim positions, we have channels, so we can output the value of a channel. Gyro is the internal um, accelerometer so you can see the angle in picture roll that this uh, transmitter is pointed at there's trainer so what can we see on trainer so that's the trainer channels i'm assuming we have timers and we have flight value system value special and i believe telemetry will also appear once that comes up so flight value is stuff like the current flight mode system value we have the clock the voltage and the real-time clock voltage. So if we set that to clock, we'll actually just get the time, which is actually date and time. So if you wanted a more comprehensive time, then this is the way to set it up. But we can get a lot more than that. So what I'm gonna do now is bind this receiver up and let's see what we get from here. Okay, so all we've done is connected this receiver to the transmitter. Next up, what we will need to do to access data on here is head over to the telemetry. And this is the same if you're using a flight controller. Once you've got a flight controller, it's gonna send stuff back via smart port or whatever um, telemetry you're using. Then if you go into telemetry, 
And what we're going to do this exact same thing. We're going to turn on discover new sensors and that will get all the sensors that it's getting back from this receiver. If you do have stuff that needs to be powered by a main battery, such as a GPS potentially, you will need that main battery plugged in to get the telemetry sensors. So once we've got all our sensors, we can turn this off. And now we can see the uh, actual sensors we're getting back from the receiver. So we have stuff like the accelerometer, we have the angles, because again, this is a stabilized receiver. We have the RSSI, which is the received signal strength indicator, how strong the signal is. We have the RX battery and uh, valid frame weight. So there's lots on here that we can actually see. Now, going back to the original question, which was how to get the receiver voltage on the screen. With this receiver, you can see I'm plugged the battery directly into this XT30 plug. So this is actually giving me the voltage of this two cell right here. So if we were using a setup like this, we just need to go back to our home page and let's change this timer to configure rigid. We're going to use um, our value. We're going to choose telemetry this time and we're going to find that RS RX bat. So let's come out of here. By the way, if you want a, a title on and off, you can do change that here. That just literally shows the sensor name above. So you can see it says RX bat and the battery voltage. So that is how you get that receiver battery voltage on your home screen. So that was all well and good, but you can see now the voltage has dropped to 5.17 volts. And the reason is because I've actually just changed the setup on this receiver. Now, a lot of people fly using a Beck or using the receiver powered from the ESC, in which case we're only going to see the output from the Beck. So it's not actually giving us the amount of power in this battery. So how do we get around it in that situation? So a lot of these receivers will actually have this connector on them and it could be in a different place. But what you're looking for is this A in two plug. And what that allows you to do is connect your battery into this pin along with the negative and it will get you the battery voltage. There is one caveat with this though. You need to check the manual to make sure that the receiver can accept the battery voltage on that pin. What we're gonna do now is head over to the computer and I'll show you what I mean. Right, so this is the spec for that SR10 Pro receiver. And what we're gonna do is go down to the specifications and what we're looking for is this voltage measurement range via A in two. And it will give you the voltage that that pin can accept. Now, most of the modern receivers can accept a wide range. So this one is zero to 36 volts. So it will take this 2S um, lithium ion with no problem whatsoever. But some of the older receivers are to a much lower voltage. I believe it's usually 3.3 volts in which case you'll need to use resistors to bring the voltage down so that it's within that limit so you can get the correct voltage. But what we're gonna do now is hook up that A in two pad and we'll see what the difference is. Right, so with these receivers, you will usually get a cable with the correct connector on it. So this connector just plugs in the end and then you can wire it up to connect to your battery. Now, all you need is the ground and the A in two. And what I've done is soldered it to a balanced connector so we can just plug it straight into the balance lead. So just yeah, obviously make the cable as long as you need to get from the receiver to the battery and make sure that you solder it correctly. So of course the positive will be on one end, you have one or many pins in the middle and then you'll have the ground at the other end. So it's sampling the whole battery. So let's plug this in. And then I'm just gonna hook it up to the balance lead. So let's get back to the transmitter. So we've got everything plugged in, but you can see that we still have an RX voltage here of 5.17 volts. That's because we're looking at the wrong parameter still. That's measuring this pin. So let's add the actual parameter that we're gonna be using for V8 in two. So let me just go to configure widget and we're gonna change the value to a telemetry value. And this time we're gonna be using ADC2, which is our A in two pad. So let's pop out of here and you can see it's five volt. So now what we need to do is tune the sensor so that it's getting the correct voltage. So what we're gonna do is go into the aeroplane menu. We're gonna to go to telemetry 
and we're going to go down to this ADC2 and we're going to long press to edit. Now what we need to do is scroll down and you will find ratio. So what we're going to do is measure the voltage and then adjust the ratio to get that value the same. So I've got my multimeter here. So let's have a quick look. So what we're going to do is adjust this um, ratio here until at the top, which is in grey, you can see the voltage. So we need to increase it. So we're just going to go up until this says 7.22. So it's on the verge of 7.21, so I'm literally just going to go up one click from the 7.21. And that will now be giving us our correct voltage. So we can confirm on the multimeter, which, let's turn the light on. There we go, it's a bit better. So we can see on the, multi, the multimeter, we have 7.221 volts. On our ADC, we have 7.22 volts. So that is the same voltage. We now know that this ADC is reading the correct voltage. And that's how you'd get your pack voltage onto your transmitter and display it on the screen. Now, there is one thing that we, we should really point out here is when we connected it up via the XT60 port, it was giving us um, a different value. So let me check that. It may be that it just needed tuning. So now let's plug that directly back into the receiver. And we can check this. So yeah, this one is still reading a bit low. So we should be able to tweak that as well. So let's get back in the telemetry. Let's go down to our RX bat and let's long press and see if we can adjust. Yeah, so we have a ratio here and we can adjust that up to 7.22 volts as well. This one is a bit less stable, but there we go. That's about right. So now we have both voltages and they're both going to be pretty much correct. You notice these are red now. It's just because I've disconnected the receiver. There's no telemetry coming through. It's just letting you know that the st they are stale values. At the beginning, I showed that you could have multiple screens and we can have different layouts. So what I'm going to do is quickly show you how you can set that up. So this middle icon here is the screen button. And we also have display here. So if you press that, you can get to the setup page for all these widgets. So this is our main screen, so it's screen one. And we have our bitmap and we have our different sensors. We can actually change the layout of this if we want. If we make sure that this is highlighted up here and long press, you can go to change layout and choose whichever style you want. There's plenty on there. You can have two big areas with all the trims. So this is probably useful if you've got maybe some sort of listing uh, widget or a graphical widget like a graph. The other one that's slightly different is full screen, which is mostly used for full screen Lua scripts, such as the Yapu mapping widget. So we won't go into that, but that is the main reason for having that is it just takes up the whole screen. If we wanted to keep the original screen, we can actually add a second and third and fourth and fifth. You just press this uh, plus button to add a new screen and choose the layout you want. So I was using that layout earlier in the video, but you can literally just choose whatever you want. So let's choose this one, for example. You can put in whatever you like. So put a line chart in here and let's set that to Let's set it to a telemetry value and let's set it to our, our pitch angle just as, as an example. You can do a lot of things to set this up. I usually just do auto range, it then sort of shrinks and grows. Um, but yeah, just play about with these things and get used to what they do. But there's a lot of useful information in here. So this one, let's go for a value, go back to telemetry and we'll just choose our receiver battery again. And on the bottom, let's put, I don't know, let's do another line chart. Let's just do our elevator stick, just an example. Right, so we've set up our second page 
And as I mentioned, you can either just swipe the screen across or you can press this button here to go to the different page. So we've seen the RX bat before. This is exactly the same. The, these two are now line charts, so you can see we would not move this at all yet. So we have 0% in the middle and a st uh, straight line. If I start moving the elevator, you can see that the actual scales change and it fits it in there. So this is not really useful for elevator, but say you've got a vario, you could actually see altitude difference, maybe um, uh, vertical speed. If I plug this back in, we will then start seeing the pitch angle. So there we go. So the pitch angle is changing. Uh, yeah, this is just an example of some of the stuff you can do. These They're quite cool, but I think the best way to learn about all these screens is, is just to dig in and have a look. Once you know how you can set them up, actually doing the setup and it, investigating is pretty straightforward. The exception being the full screen lures, which I'll cover that in a different video when we install the uh, mapping widget. And um, yeah, that's basically it. There's, there's not a lot to this, but I hope you guys found this useful. So there we go, guys. I hope you found this video useful. If you did, please give it a thumbs up and remember to click the subscribe and bell icon. That will help get this video out to more people so they can learn how to do this too. If you have any questions about this, drop them in the comments and I'll see what I can do about answering them. But until the next time, fly models like you stole them if you've got good weather and have fun. See you later. Oh, Merry Christmas.